It means this empty space that gives language its mobility. It is because our language is full of these little nonsensical words, like Larry Strauss gives example, how mana in the culture generalizes, or all the ones quoted from Lewis, Lewis Carroll by Deleuze, without these little non-meaning words, uh, language wouldn't be able to function. So the symbolic here means the coexistence of signs and of these empty boxes or places or space or spaces or value zero. This is also uh, why Derrida talks about uh, the origin of language as a supplement or an excess. excess. So I'm sorry for this detour, which was necessary to come back to my problem about biopolitics. What makes me think of uh, this double symbolic economy, like the symbol production as a representation and the symbolic economy, which is prior to this production, is uh, when I discovered while reading Foucault, and particularly History of Sexuality, Volume 1, that, uh, in fact, what he described under the name of biopolitics was a kind of, again, symbolic economy in the double sense of the term. Like a symbol production and then something deriving from a value zero uh, economy. I will refer to, to, to exemplify what I said. I think of the passage in History of Sexuality in which Foucault analyzes the transition from what he calls a society of blood which was the incarnation of the, the previous form of sovereignty, to a society of sex, which is the modern form of sovereignty. The passage from the society of blood to a society of sex coincides with the transition from the traditional to the modern form of sovereignty and the emergence of biopolitics as such. When he when we read this, the way in which Foucault analyzes this passage, we discover that in fact, for him, sovereignty coincides with the transformation of certain biological categories into symbols. And we can't understand what Foucault calls sovereignty, and even biopolitics, without understanding that in fact, these processes, these instances, coincide with the, well, with the symbolization, with the process of symbolization. I read from um, a History of Sexuality. A society of blood, uh, I was tempted to say of sanguinity. In a society of blood, power spoke through blood. The, hon the honor of war, the fear of famine, the triumph of death, the sovereign with his sword, executioners and torturers. Blood was a reality with a symbolic function. We, on the other hand, on the other hand, are in a society of sex, or rather a society with a sexuality. The mechanisms of power are addressed to the body, to life, to what causes it to proliferate, to what reinforces the species, its stamina, its ability to dominate, or its capacity for being used. Through the themes of health, progeny, race, the future of the species, the vitality of the social body, power spoke of sexuality and to sexuality. So we can say that in both cases, blood and sex, blood and sex are biological categories which are symbols which are constituted into symbols through which the power expresses itself. They are transformed, these biological categories, in what Foucault calls a bit further, effects with a meaning value. So sovereignty, as I said, appears as a process of transformation of biological categories into symbols. This political symbolization, which 
according to me, is the very operation of sovereignty. Uh, this political symbolization of the biological is contemporaneous with the emergence of biology as a science. And we also see that in Derrida's uh, seminar on the beast and the sovereign. Uh, the beast appears as the symbol of the sovereign. So between bio and politics, you have a third term, which is always the symbolic. So of course, in Foucault, sex is the privileged example of a biopolitical categories, which is used as a symbol that many others in Foucault's function, tissue, milieu, membrane. And that is why, in a text like Criticism and Clinic, Foucault declares that biological concepts are immediately transgressive. They are, in French, the surface de projection du pouvoir, uh, surf pure surfaces for power relationships projections. So this symbolic use of biological theories um, lays foundation on the fact that for Foucault, as well as for any other of the philosophers I was talking about, biological categories in themselves are nothing. They, are, they have no meaning except uh, the one they receive when they are transformed into symbol, into symbols of sovereignty. For the philosophers I'm talking about, biological categories have no existence in themselves outside of this political symbolization function. They are transparent. This is why, according to Foucault, a biological concept, and I said structure, function, tissue, membrane, all of them, a political concept, a biological concept per se, can only be a transparent instance with a normative content and function which is not biological. Biological concepts are void, transparent, and it is only sovereignty which confers them their content, which is always repressive and normative. That is why for Foucault, but we could also show, and uh, we can go back to that in the discussion, that is exactly the same thing for Agamben and Derrida. Biological concepts are immediately edible by politics. They're immediately erasable into symbol their symbolic functions, which are never, never biological, well, originally biological. It is as, as if the well, biological categories were politically one-sided, as if they couldn't give us anything to articulate philosophically outside the theory of repression, discipline, normativity, dressage, etc. This, that is why, according to these philosophers, biological categories are not able to provide us with a theory of resistance to sovereignty. There is no bio-resistance to bio-power. You won't find anything in Foucault or Derrida or Gelman that comes from biology which might be able to help us to resist uh, sovereignty or to turn biology against itself. Um, there is no bioresistance to, to bio power, and these categories are only one-sided. They are vehicles for of symbolic functions that exceeds them. So this was the first meaning of the symbolic. Biological categories uh, constituted in symbols, like blood, sex, etc. And we can also, perhaps in the discussion, come back to the notion of autoimmunity, also in Derrida, which is a biological concept transformed, transformed into a symbolic uh, instance. The critique of sovereignty, then, in Foucault mainly, but also it is also valuable for the other philosophers, the critique of sovereignty will tend to show how this symbol production of, of sovereignty, sovereignty, sovereign power using biology as a symbolic surface, as a kind of 
self-representation. The critique of sovereignty will then aim at showing that this symbol of production functions as an obliteration of a more fundamental symbolic economy. Sovereignty, according to Foucault and to the other philosophers, functions as a reduction or restriction of the emptiness of the symbolic understood as an economy. The sovereign, whatever its meaning, is something which, which is trying to fill the floating signifier gap with the content, to interrupt the mobility of the floating signifiers and to transform it into an essence of a fi or a fixed entity. This is what sovereignty is, the result of a transformation of the floating signifier into a rigid figure, that of the king, of the law, or whatever. The symbol production in sovereignty, blood, sex, is an obliteration or an eclipse of the symbolic understood as an economy. What I mean here is that Foucault or Derrida or Gamba won't ever say what I just said. We should criticize the symbol production, well, sovereignty as a symbol of production. We should criticize that in giving biological categories, in trying to bring to life their resistance potential. We, we have to show that biology is not only this symbolic ve vehicle of sovereignty, but that it can also help us to deconstruct sovereignty. No. On the contrary, biology is never, never, mm, uh, well, is never interrogated for itself. No, what we will show is that sovereignty, if we want to critique sovereignty, we have to criticize it in the name of another symbolic understanding, not the symbol production economy, but the floating signifier economy that uh, the symbol production obliterates. But in both cases, biology is never on the foreground. And it is very interesting in a text like in, in the text called How Do We Recognize Structuralism, which is a text by Deleuze, published in Desert Island and other texts. In this text, Deleuze shows that uh, Levi Strauss's definition of the symbolic as this empty space thing, etc., is very present in Foucault's thought. So even if Foucault, as we know, uh, criticizes structuralism and Levi Strauss very strongly. In fact, according to Deleuze, he remains a structuralist to the extent that what he describes it under the name of micro powers, as this proliferation of powers, is very close to what Levi Strauss understands as the symbolic economy. So again, uh, sovereignty will be criticized from the point of view of this originally symbolic economy and never from the point of view of biology. In both cases, biology will remain uh, subdued to the symbolic. I will develop a little bit on this second meaning of the symbolic. Defined as an empty space, the symbolic has, according to Levi Strauss, the double function. The value zero of the floating signifier is both the sacred and what is offered to sacrifice. So in language, the empty space represents the sacred and what is offered to sacrifice. It is the most preserved and the most exposed, both, as I said, the sacred and the sacrificial. Life in modernity, and this is what Agamben, well, this is the meaning of Agamben's work after Foucault. Life in modernity is the floating signifier, both sacred and sacrificial. 